to shoplifting on recipes for disaster an anarchist cookbook copyrighted in 2005 we were last talking about having a exacto knife or a blade taped around your finger to make it look like an injury I'm gonna continue reading so I can uh, polish this off pretty quick take a stroll in with you if you have a child or you know anyone that has a child or two the bigger the stroller, the better the shop with a store. Hand baskets on your arm while pushing the stroller and quickly filling the compartments. Install a zipper opening on the side of your backpack that lies against your back. This can be perfect for secretly items. You can steal zippers from craft stores. Get a get it quiet, smooth moving one. I don't know who the fuck would steal a zipper. It's probably like a dollar and seventy-five cents. But if you're desperate, which I wouldn't advise anything I'm saying in this video, let's do it. I guess I wouldn't. Uh, uh, cargo pockets can be provided good hiding spots, but there are a thousand of other options. Tuck in the bottom of your shirt and slide things through your collar while wearing a bagged hoodie sweatshirt. Suck in your stomach and slide flat items halfway into your the next page. Pants. Using the elastic of your underwear and the waist of your pants to hold them in place. But stuff them in your socks while pretending to tie your shoelaces. Slide the items down the sleeves of a puffy jacket with the tight tufts. Slip small items into a up-Q water bottle with a wide mouth. Cut the hole in the bottom of the jacket so you can slip the larger items through the lining. Sew in extra pockets to your clothes. If you wear a coat or a sweater that zips up in front, you can slip small items inside the coat and press them under your arm with lighting, lightning quickness. Sorry, I had to correct myself. You don't have to conceal items to steal them. Sometimes it works better just to walk out like, the, like you own them. In a grocery store, Hannaford's, it's an inside joke, in a grocery store, they may be a side door where you can just roll right out you fill the car through you push it through I should have said into the parking lot to apply to the principal on a smaller scale carry an expensive item over your left hand or grip it under your left arm while you pay for a cheap item with with your right hand incredibly yeah, incredibly, employers will not notice the other item. I had to do this by accident before I could believe it works, but it does. The best way that it that you will have to conceal anything is if the cashier notice. It looks like a honest mistake, and you can purchase the item assuming you have the money too. If not, you have to separate from the items because you need to get a price check. Silly you. One tip. When you use the technique, have a correct amount of cash ready before you are in the line. Don't You don't want to be fumbling for cash with one hand. You make yourself look sketchy, you know? Um, that right there would be the end of that paragraph. I'm going to read on because it's only four minutes into this video and I want to use this as a time bending. If you need cash or any item that is too difficult to shoplift, you can take stolen items to the return desk. I've done this before and a lot of people would actually laugh at that story that I'm going to tell after this. Claiming that you have bought it. Fewer and fewer stores will give you a refund or exchange useless so you can present a receipt. But there are ways to get those too. I've found that 
with return scams, it is less suspicious to place the item in some sort of bag or backpack. Get in a normal line and ask, can I return here? They will send you to the return desk, customer service desk. They said return desk in this, but I'm just going to say customer service would be anywhere from Walmart, Shaw's, Target, Hannaford's, uh, Publix, which is only down south. Better than just walking up to the return desk from inside the store. Even better, get the item from the store altogether and have a friend to go in and return it or come back the other day. That way, the most you can get is a busted for is just shoplifting. So pretty much the same like um, go into a store, steal like five DVDs that are worth like our Blu-rays is Blu-rays now mostly. Steal like five Blu-rays, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's going to say later on in this chapter, walk out with a group of people at the same time because um, what they call a misunderstanding alarm that sets off 80% of the time that people you're walking out with will have electronics either regardless it's gonna say that in there um, then you go back the next day the barcode's gonna be in the system uh, they'll scan it and say you know I don't have my receipt anymore I want to refund most stores like Walmart, Target um, I don't know about anywhere else they won't give you cash back, but they will give you uh, store credit. You can go take that store credit and purchase a Walmart gift certificate. And then you can go back to a different Walmart. Not the same one because they're going to recognize you. You can go to a different Walmart with the receipt of the your Walmart card and you will get cash. All right. Okay, you can remove an expensive item from its box and place it in a box that is a cheaper price, which is like taking tags off something else, putting on something that's cheaper. Uh, prepare to play the irritated cu a consumer customer. If the cashier notices this, don't do this with shoes. Employees sometimes check inside instead you might be able to try them on and leave your old shoes in the box i've done that a hundred times in Walmart, and i've been caught for plenty of them you can go to the stocking areas in the back of the store and ask for boxes for you will quickly be filled up before walking out the door that's pretty much some stores you gotta buy boxes now but back then I don't know about 2005, but you could use to get stocking old boxes for free, and you know it's already been used boxes, so you can't mail it. So you just fill that shit up lightly. Yeah, it says fill the box up lightly, and walk out the door, because you want to not make it look like you're fucking carrying three, four hundred fucking pounds worth of shit, you know? Because you're gonna be struggling, and they're gonna be like, "Yo, you got something in there." Page four. Two people can work together. One gather the items, removing the tags and scratching them off somewhere else. The other coming in afterwards and taking the prepared items out swiftly. Dressing rooms are a great place to cut off security tags. You can sew them up. You can sew up the holes later. If the salesperson counted the items on your way in, make sure you still have the item you want in the hand as well as you walk out. Finally, if the computer hacker or graphics designer, anyone that hacks or computer geek, like me sometimes, you can print out your own barcodes stickers to obtain items for a cheap price. Substitute the barcodes for the similar items to wreck the score's che uh, checkout system. Uh, the stickers randomly on uh, products throughout the store. That's pretty much sending, let's say, uh, viruses to the main system of the products. So when you make a fake barcode, anyone that doesn't know what I'm talking about is that little thing that looks like that, right there. And that. Hackers can make that on Adobe Photoshop, alter it, they can 
just change the last two digits of the number and you got something good. Um, always look for security tags inside the packages, inside the boxes of CDs, for example. If you see something in the store that has an alarm system, it's usually safer to take the item out of their packaging. Good example. When leaving the store with security tags, time your packaging through the sensors. That's what I was talking about before. To uh, conceal with other shoppers traffic. If you set off, keep walking. Fake alarms are not uncommon, and more consumers there are, the more confused there will be to cover the getaway. Look for the vigil, look out for vigilant, vigilant, vigilante customers who may turn you in to the attempt a citizen's arrest. Flat monitors are always two way. To be safe, assume that somebody is indeed watching you. As for they around, the ones that are around, if you don't see the employees, she can't see you. But be careful. Sometimes they have cameras behind them. Bum, bum, bum. That's the end of uh, video three. I've anticipated that this video was going to be... Um, four videos but it might be five thank you for watching video three on shoplifting out of recipes for disaster an anarchist cookbook uh copyrighted in 2005